start a new chapter in 12th NCRT unit number 9, it is biotechnology. There we have two chapters, chapter 11 and chapter 12. Chapter 11, biotechnology, it goes with principles and processes. What are the principles of biotechnology and what are the processes which are applied in biotechnology? Whereas coming to the next chapter, chapter 12, we will talk about the applications of biotechnology in medical field, applications of biotechnology in agricultural field, applications of biotechnology in producing transgenic animals and then ethical issues like to which extent we can use uh, a biotechnology. So, what are the areas where we, can, where we have to control it so that the nature uh, is not spoiled. So, that comes under ethical issues understood. So, these chapters we are going to do in unit number 9 which is completely related to biotechnology. So, chapter 11 is biotechnology principles and processes. Now, we know that if we have to start any chapter or any unit before starting every unit. So, NCRT introduces us to scientists right in the same manner this is unit 9. So, before starting this unit, so we should understand about two eminent scientists their names are Boyer and Cohen. These two are the people or we can tell they are the pillars for biotechnology industry right. So, it is their ideas, their principles turned out into a field or a science or a branch called biotechnology understood. Then before starting again the unit in the contents in the unit they mentioned a paragraph about another scientist his name is Rainy Discretes. Rainy Discretes who is he? He is a French philosopher it seems, he is a mathematician and is a biologist of 20th century. Rene Discretes, he is a French philosopher, mathematician and biologist of 20th century. He shared an idea, he was telling that all human knowledge, whatever knowledge we have, especially in the field of natural sciences, it was directed uh, to develop techniques which are to create comforts to the mankind. So, his concern is whatever we know about natural science, whatever knowledge we know, all that knowledge we are directing to our comforts only, to improve our value of life only, that is what is his comment. So, that means he is telling that the whole approach to understand the natural phenomenon became anthropocentric, anthropocentric means human centric, okay, this plant it is useful for me, we will exploit, we will produce new varieties this plant we do not have any use of it okay so do not bother about it like that it became so that is his idea right let us write about uh, write about the scientist what is his name his name is discretes and who is he he is a french philosopher mathematician and biologist also of 20th century. Now, what is his opinion? Now, what is the opinion of the scientist? His opinion is that all the human knowledge, especially in natural sciences, his opinion is all human knowledge. especially or especially in natural science. So, we are using all our knowledge especially in the field of natural science to develop techniques which are creating comforts to develop tools and techniques or to develop processes and techniques. which are giving, which are creating comforts, right? We can write creating, which are creating comforts. For whom are the techniques creating comforts? They are creating comforts to the human and also they are adding the human life. They are creating comforts to human and they are adding value to whose life? To human life only. 
Now, ultimately, what it is, what this sentence or what is his opinion is, the whole approach of understanding natural phenomenon is human centric, is anthropocentric. So, he was telling that the whole approach of understanding the natural phenomenon, he is telling the whole approach of understanding the natural phenomenon. Phenomenon nature became anthropocentric. What do you mean by anthropocentric? Man centric. I just gave you an example. This plant is useful for the man, so exploit it and produce new varieties, increase its yields, increase its resistant character, like that. The other plant which is not useful for us, it might be useful for the nature, ecology and environment but we are not bothered. That is what his, uh, that is what his meaning is. That is what the meaning of this sentence and this is what his conclusion. Now, he tells that physics and chemistry are applied sciences, right? Botany and zoology are natural sciences. Physics and chemistry are applied sciences. Physics and chemistry only gave rise to industries, gave rise to engineering and gave rise to technology. But this engineering also, the industries also, technology also, all are working towards human comfort and welfare only. So, branches like physics and chemistry, he is telling that branches like physics and chemistry, they gave rise to, they gave rise to industries, right? They gave rise to industries, they gave rise to engineering. And they gave rise to industries, engineering and we can tell technology also. Now, again, these fields, these industries, engineering and technology, all are working for human comfort and welfare only. All are also working for, they are working for what? For human welfare and comfort. They are also, physics and chemistry are also working for human welfare and comfort only. Now, now go, we have a technology called biotechnology. Now, if you talk about biotechnology, what is this? We consider this is an offshoot of 20th century's modern biology. It's not classical biology, it's not traditional biology. It is an offshoot, means it is a branch of 20, uh, it's a branch of 20th century modern biology. Biotechnology, children, what it is? Which? is an offshoot of what 20th century 20th century modern biology right even if you go with the recent science which is biotechnology what it is it is the offshoot of 20th century modern biology so this has also changed our daily life right earlier we used to take traditional vaccines, attenuated vaccines, heat killed vaccines, but now we are taking RDNA vaccines, right, recombinant vaccines. So, they are much safer, they are much immunopotent also. So, biotechnology has changed our lives. The products of biotechnology has brought quantitative improvement in the health products. So, we can tell biotechnology which is an offshoot of modern biology has changed our lives. has changed our lives in bringing in bringing modern and safer products right modern and safer products vaccine i took an example so it has introduced us to modern and safer products like which brought quantitative improvement in health production which brought quantitative improvement in health products. So, children, all this is introduction to the unit. All this is introduction to the unit. Before starting the unit, on the right hand side page of NCRT. So, this was the introduction the author is trying to give us, right? So, let us again one see what is the introduction they have given for this unit. So, they have given an opinion of a scientist. Who is he? Rene Discretes. Who is he? 
he is a french philosopher he is a mathematician he is a biologist of 20th century so what is his opinion he his opinion is all our knowledge especially in natural science we are developing a techniques and processes which are going to create comforts which are going to create comforts for humans and they are adding value to our life only so ultimately what he wants to say in simple terms is so the whole approach of understanding natural phenomenon became man centric became anthropocentric means we are getting selfish right so then he was telling like physics and chemistry you take so they don't have any relation with biology physics and chemistry are applied sciences even though they are applied sciences physics and chemistry are used to develop industries techniques engineering technology even these branches are also working for human welfare and comfort only then now come to the trend now the new technology the new sciences biotechnology what is it so they're telling it is an offshoot means it's a branch of 20th century modern biology now it is also it has also changed our life how it has changed our lives by bringing improved products safer products no side effects so it has improved qualitatively our life by improving the products in health production understood so if you want to take the screenshot then we will get introduced to two eminent scientists i told they are the pillars they are the pillars or they are the backbones for the biotechnological industry what are their names boyer and cohen we will look into those two scientists and their contributions then only we will start the chapter quickly take a screenshot right now let us talk about two more scientists i told one scientist name is herbert boyer another scientist name is cohen what they have done how did their idea help to build a billion dollar company called biotechnology let us work out so in ncrt they have given the picture of herbert boyer let's talk about him first herbert boyer born in 1936 boyer is born in 1936 where is born in western peninsulavia he is born 1936 in western peninsulavian he was born in western peninsulavia where railroads and mines are the only destiny for the people means they are mostly workers right we are peninsulavia where railroads and mines and working in mines are the destiny for the people this is a destiny for the people who are born there means they are mostly working class people but with a such a background also boyer completed his graduation in 63 he completed his graduation when children in 1963 in other three years he completed his post graduation also he completed his post graduation in other three years in 1966 he completed his graduation in 63 he completed his post graduation in 66 from ale now after that in the same year 1966 itself he joined as an assistant professor he joined as an assistant right professor at california university he joined as a assistant professor at california university san francisco there he joined as an assistant professor now after that in 69 he started working on a couple of restriction enzymes so we were talking about herbert boyer he was born in 1936 in western peninsulavia where most of the people are workers and they are working on railroads and mines 
from such a background he came out he completed his education in 63 he completed his graduation he completed his post graduation in 66 in the year same year 66 he joined as an assistant professor in california university san francisco and then we are telling that in 69 he started working on couple of restriction enzymes so in 1969 he started working on couple of restriction enzymes we can call restriction enzymes as ren restriction endonucleases what does ren stands for restriction endonucleases it's called as restriction endonucleases or we can also call it as restriction enzymes they are so he was working on couple of restriction enzymes isolated from e coli from where did they remove these enzymes he isolated this enzyme from a bacteria called e coli he isolated that enzyme from a bacteria called e coli one point to remember here these restriction enzymes are only isolated by are only prepared by prokaryotes only not by eukaryotes eukaryotes will not produce this enzyme keep this in mind only prokaryotes will prepare this enzyme so if you want any restriction enzyme you have to borrow it from bacteria only understood bacteria or archaea bacteria like from monera only from prokaryotes only so he was working on a couple of restriction enzymes isolated from e coli and he told that it cuts the dna in a particular fashion not randomly he observed that these enzymes cut dna in a particular fashion he told that they cut the dna in a particular fashion which will leave clipped ends or sticky ends which leave clipped ends or you can call them as sticky ends if you want to understand what are sticky ends i'll take an example i'll take an example so let's draw a dna strand right so 5 prime to 3 prime are the two ends of dna opposite strand will be anti parallel so 5 will be here 3 will be here then let us take a sequence okay a particular nucleotide sequence i am going with g a a t t c since it is 5 prime to 3 prime g a t t c in this way also it should be c pairs with g anyway g a a t t c so this is a sequence a pairs with t by 2 bonds g pairs with c by 3 bonds this is one dna sequence so i will go with another dna molecule but here also i am going to take the same sequence here also i am going to take the same sequence called g a a t t c so let's go g a a t t c g a a t t c now this is one specific sequence which is digested by a restriction enzyme called e co r1 slowly you will understand when we get into the chapter what is eco r1 so just now remember it is eco r1 which is a restriction enzyme which cuts the dna in a he told it cuts the dna in a particular manner and it's going to leave clip ends i'm trying to tell you what are clip ends or sticky ends so now this is an enzyme where does it cuts then it cuts the backbone of the dna means the backbone of the dna is made up of phosphodiester bonds in a specific manner means it can identify specific base sequences so ma it identifies g and a and it breaks the bond here here also it identifies and it breaks the bond here means a restriction enzyme is breaking the phosphodiester bonds between g and a only here and here now here also it's going to break here then 
and where is G and A here? Here then it's going to break. Okay. So yeah, you can draw the bonds here also hydrogen bonds. G and C show three hydrogen bonds between them. A and T two bonds. 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 C and G three bonds. Right. So when this enzyme or restriction enzyme comes and cuts the DNA in this manner, what will happen? Tell me. So I'll draw it. So we'll be left. With the DNA fragment in this manner. So this is the 5 prime end. This is the 3 prime end. The G will be intact with us. And here it has digest. Here it have cle cleave right. So C, T, T, A, A. If this is 3 prime this is 5. If this is 5 this is 3. Now these 5 are lost. This is lost and this is lost. Now come to that corner and see when it digests how do you get there. Right. Now let's go. We will just write down here. It is echo R1. I need the space. So when you digest here, this will be like this. Because G digested, right? So A, A, T, T, C are intact. A, A, T, T, C and below it is G. So here is 3 prime end. Means this will be 5 prime end. Here is 5 prime end. Here it will be 3 prime end. So when you digest this DNA molecule and this DNA molecule with a restriction enzyme called ECO R1, so like this you are going to get the DNA fragments. Now he called these single stranded DNA fragments as clipped ends or sticky ends. Why did he call it as a sticky end? Now just check are they complementary to each other or not? Come on see T T can it base pair with this A A? Yes. This AA can base pair with this TT again yes means they can simply combine with each other. So this if it is red DNA and this is green DNA so they are complementary to each other. If you just give a DNA ligase molecule it is enough to join them. But they will come and stick right. So because of their complement complementarity they can easily join that is what he observed. This is what is the discovery of Herbert Boyer. He isolated a couple of restriction enzymes where did we write? He isolated a couple of restriction enzymes from a bacteria called E. coli. What are restriction enzymes? In detail we are going to study. I, but then I told you restriction enzymes are also called as REN. And restriction enzymes are prepared only by bacteria, prokaryotes, archaebacteria also which are all prokaryotes. Now these enzymes he told that they will cut the DNA in a precise manner. And it leaves sticky ends. I will tell these sticky ends are... 5 prime overhanging structures. Now, is it the 5 prime overhanging stretch? Here also, is it the 5 prime overhanging stretch? You can just tell that these are called as 5 prime overhanging stretches. 5 prime overhanging stretches. Here also, here also. And this 5 prime overhanging stretches what they will do they'll make the combi combining process by DNA ligase very easy right so combining will become easy when sticky ends are there joining of fragments joining of fragments will be easy nama it will be easy so this is the discovery of Herbert Boyer if you want you can take a screenshot Yes. Now, this is his discovery. He was, when he was uh, making conversation with another scientist who is in Hawaii, his name is Stanley Cohen. Then he was telling like what he has done and they are both their interests or both their techniques when you mix together. So, it will help to create an RDNA molecule that they understood it and then they constructed the first RDNA molecule in the year 1972. So, right now we have discussed about Boyer. Now, let us talk about Cohen. We will tell this discovery. What discovery? Discovery of restriction enzymes. This discovery 
in turn led to in turn led to rich conversation with whom rich conversation at hawaii with the stanford scientist with a stanford scientist you know what is his name stanley cohen his name is stanley cohen or uh, now this boyer he is conversing or uh, he was explaining all his discovery with one more scientist his name is stanley cohen now that the time cohen told i am working on another thing so then cohen told what is cohen's work cohen took a bacteria in the bacteria since we know it's a prokaryote it doesn't have well defined nucleus no nucleus the bacterial chromosome double stranded circular dna it is like this this is a bacterial chromosome now what cohen observed is cohen observed there are some small there are some small circular double stranded dna molecules which are called plasmids now listen plasmids he didn't discover liederberg discovered plasmids who discovered plasmids plasmids are first discovered by plasmids are first discovered by liederberg now which were already discovered now cohen what did he observe it means so a bacteria is having many plasmids a bacterial cell having only one chromosome is having many plasmids so cohen developed a method what did he do he developed a method he developed a method to isolate the plasmid to remove the plasmid he developed a method to isolate the plasmid from the bacterial cell he developed a method to isolate the plasmid from a bacterial cell right he took out the plasmid from a bacterial cell and he tried to reinsert into another bacterial cell if you take from this bacterial cell and if you give back to the same bacterial cell obviously the bacteria will take because it's its own plasmid but if you are giving it to the other bacteria and the other bacteria also took it and the other bacteria is also replicating then he got succeeded so he developed a technique to isolate the plasmid out and to reinsert the plasmid into an another bacteria right he isolated the plasmid from a bacterial cell and reinserted we should write reinserted it into another bacteria he reinserted it into another bacteria now this person this person who is e cohen isolated a plasmid boyer isolated an enzyme which can cut it right now we can tell combining this process with that of boyer splicing so we can write a point that combining this process with boyer's with boyer splicing enzyme with boyer's splicing enzyme so take out the plasmid which is done by the cohen now digest it with the boyer's enzyme enabled right what did it enable it enabled cutting right it enabled to produce new combination which enable to produce new combination for example this is the plasmid isolated by cohen and this is a restriction enzyme isolated by boyer restriction enzyme isolated by boyer which cuts the dna so when the dna when the plasmid is open it gets open like this now when it gets open like this so you can insert uh, your own desired dna in between this space so when this plasmid is having dna now from two different sources one is a foreign dna what is this dna called 
this is called foreign DNA and what is this DNA called it is plasmid DNA if a thing is having two DNAs one its own DNA the other one is a foreign DNA then can I call it as a recombinant DNA then now this becomes a recombinant DNA molecule this becomes a recombinant DNA molecule now when you combine these two processes together Boyer's way of isolating an enzyme uh, sorry Cohen's way of isolating an enzyme Boyer's enzyme to digest it and inserting a desired DNA you will get a new combination you will get a recombinant DNA now after that uh, Cohen again knows to how to insert it right so getting a new combination and introducing they introduced it also they introduced into a new bacterial cell they introduced into a new bacterial cell now this bacterial cell what it will become this bacterial cell will become a manufacturing plant this bacterial cell will keep on multiplying now you have inserted into this new bacterial cell which is having its dna and you have inserted this plasmids also now this bacterial cell will now become a manufacturing plant and it will produce many copies of your gene desired gene see I have drawn here how many copies did the bacteria produce for us all this is recombinant DNA only right so the bacteria will now act as a manufacturing plant to produce our DNA so when you introduce into bacterial cell the bacterial cell acts as a manufacturing plant now the bacteria becomes a manufacturing plant to produce our proteins it becomes a manufacturing plant to produce the special proteins or it will clone the DNA the DNA what you have given it will clone it right so this is a combined effort of both the scientists right this breakthrough was the basis for biotechnology so we can write down this breakthrough right so when you combine both the efforts we can tell this breakthrough was the basis upon which the discipline of biotechnology was laid on was the basis upon which the discipline of biotechnology was laid on understood children so as i told like before starting any unit so we need to understand about the works or the scientists what they contributed towards this field now before starting the unit so there's a description about a french philosopher mathematician biologist his name is René Descartes we studied about him also what is his opinion of human understanding the natural science that we studied after that we came and we understood about the two eminent scientists who are pillar like structures right so whose ideas are behind uh, constructing a biotechnology company so the first scientist is Herbert Boyer and the next scientist is Cohen and when we combine both their works together so we were able to construct biotechnology or recombinant DNA molecule that's what we wrote so combining when you are combining this process of isolating the DNA with the Boyer splicing enzyme, we are able to produce a new combination. This new combination is called recombinant DNA molecule. Now this recombinant DNA molecule, when you introduce into a new bacterial cell, the bacterial cell will act as a manufacturing factory to produce the special proteins or it will clone the DNA. Now this breakthrough discovery is the main discipline of biotechnology. Hope you enjoyed this lecture, Introduction to Biotechnology. In the next lecture, we'll uh, start the chapter Biotechnology. Who coined the term Biotechnology? Who is father of Biotechnology? What are the principles of Biotechnology? We'll see in the next class, right? So if you like the lecture, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.